Hi there, this is Mahesh here and welcome to the Celestial Quest. In my previous videos, I talked about how zodiac is formed, how we divide the zodiac in 12 equal parts called signs or rashis, and how the same zodiac is also marked with 27 constellations of stars called nakshatras. In those videos, I briefly mentioned two types of zodiacs called tropical zodiac and sidereal zodiac. Today, I'm going to talk about these in more detail and we'll try to explain the differences between the two. In the diagrams in my previous videos, I showed you that the sun is in the center and earth is revolving around it, which is the true representation of how the things are. This relative position of earth and other planets with respect to the sun is called heliocentric system. But from the earth, when we look at the sky, things look different. Since the earth rotates towards the east from earth we find that the sun is moving from east to west, that is rising in the east and setting in the west. And same seem to happen with the planets as well. In astronomy and astrology, the positions of these celestial bodies are measured as seen from the earth, and these are called geocentric positions. Therefore, to make it easier to understand the difference between the tropical and the sidereal zodiacs, we have to look at the things from geocentric perspective. And that is what we are going to do today. So let's get started. Take a look at the diagram on the screen. Here the earth is in the center and the orange circle around it is called ecliptic, which is the sun's apparent path. You may have already know you may already know that the axis of the earth is an imaginary line which passes through its center and connects the north and south poles. We also know that Earth's axis is tilted at an angle of about 23.5 degrees to its orbital plane or ecliptic. And I'm sure you already know that the equator is another imaginary line running across the largest circumference of the Earth in east-west direction and is equidistant, equidistant from its poles dividing the sphere into two equal halves called northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. So far so good. There is also another concept in astronomy and astrology called celestial sphere, which is used to model the sky. Let's see what it is. Think of the sky as a crystalline hollow sphere of very large radius surrounding the earth. Imagine that the stars are stuck to the inside wall of this sphere and this sphere takes one day to rotate, carrying the sun, moon, planets and stars from east to west. I'm showing how the celestial sphere might look like on the screen now. I'm not showing the full sphere here as I want to show you zodiac and other stuff more closely, but I assume you get the idea how the celestial sphere might look like. We know that the sky is not a sphere and stars and planets are not are all scattered and sky does not rotate, but celestial sphere is often used to model the sky. Now, how we map the Earth by imaginary lines called longitude and latitude, astronomers use the same concept to map the imaginary celestial sphere. On this sphere, celestial equator and celestial poles, etc. are also marked. These are nothing but the extension of Earth's equator and poles. That is, Earth's equator is extended in all directions so that it becomes equator of the celestial sphere, and Earth's poles are extended in north and south so they become celestial poles. Celestial equator crosses the ecliptic at an angle of about 23.5 degrees as the Earth is tilted along its axis by the same amount. The celestial equator intersects ecliptic twice e every year. Since Sun is in the same plane as the ecliptic, this is same as saying that the celestial equator passes through the center of the Sun twice each year. These dates are around 20th of March and 23rd of September. When sun is passing from the southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere, it cuts the equator in March and that is called the vernal equinox or spring equinox. And when the sun is passing from the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere, it cuts the equator in September and this is called the autumnal or fall equinox by the people in the northern hemisphere. These two points are shown on the screen. On the dates of these two equinoxes, 
the days and the nights are approximately of equal duration all over the planet. Now let's look at what the solstices are. Two times a year, the sun is at its greatest distance from the celestial equator due to the tilt in the Earth's axis, as shown on the screen with dotted red arrow. Bear in mind that the celestial equator is nothing but the extension of Earth's equator. On around June 21, the sun reaches its northernmost point from celestial equator. And around 22nd December, it reaches its southernmost point from the celestial equator. And these are called summer solstice and winter solstice respectively by the people in the northern hemisphere. You can see that the arrow pointing towards the earth from the right side in case of summer solstice points towards the north of the equator. Similarly, you can also see that the arrow pointing towards the earth from the left side in case of winter solstice points towards the south of the earth's equator. In Northern Hemisphere, on summer solstice, the day is longest than any other day in the year. And on the winter solstice, the day is the shortest. And opposite is true for Southern Hemisphere. The reason I said these equinoxes and solstices are called as spring and autumn equinoxes and summer and winter solstices by the people in the Northern Hemisphere is historic one. Historically, and even now, most of the Earth's population is concentrated in the Northern Hemisphere. And most of these references came from the texts written by the people living in the Northern Hemisphere. On this next screen, I have shown the equinoxes and solstices from real perspective, that is non-geocentric viewpoint, to make it clearer. Let's take a look at it closely. Since Earth axis is tilted to its orbital plane by about 23.5 degrees, as we saw earlier, as the Earth makes its yearly orbit, one hemisphere faces the Sun more than the other. The hemisphere that faces the Sun more experiences the summer during that time of the year, and at the same time the other hemisphere experiences winter. Since the Earth's axis is tilted, as the Earth rotates around the Sun, it tilts a little away from the Sun as shown in the position D or towards the Sun as shown in the position B. However, the equinoxes mark the exact dates twice a year when the Earth's axis is not tilted towards or away from the Sun at all due to Earth's position at that time as shown by points A and C in the diagram. Hence, on these two equinoxes, the days and nights are approximately of equal duration all over the planet in both northern and southern hemisphere and that is why they are called equinoxes meaning equal day and night whereas during solstices the sun reaches its northernmost point as shown by position b and the southernmost point as shown by position d from the celestial equator which is nothing but the extension of earth's equator this is shown by the arrow on the right of the sun pointing to the northernmost point from the equator and the arrow on the left of the sun pointing to the southernmost point from the equator. During summer or June solstice, the northern hemisphere gets more sunlight, so the day is longest on this date in the northern hemisphere. And during winter or December solstice, northern hemisphere gets the least sunlight, so the day is shortest on this date in the northern hemisphere. And the exact opposite happens on these two dates in the southern hemisphere. That is, day is shortest on summer solstice of 21 June and longest on winter solstice of December 22nd. Thus, the tilt in Earth's axis to its orbital plane is the main reason why we experience seasons on Earth. I hope so far you are with me. Now let me go back to previous diagram and let's see how Let's now see how this is related to the tropical and sidereal zodiacs. We will now be focusing on these two zodiacs, so let me get rid of some information from this diagram which is less significant. From my previous videos, you already know that the zodiac or what we call Bha Chakra in Sanskrit is an area of the heavens that extends about 9 degrees on either side of the ecliptic and it appears like a band as I am showing you on the screen. 
We also know that the zodiac is divided into 12 equal parts called zodiac signs or Rashis and the zodiac has a fixed starting point which is 0 degrees of Aries. In case of the tropical zodiac or what we call Sayana in Sanskrit, this starting point is the vernal equinox point shown with the red dot on the screen. I'm now showing the position of all the 12 zodiac signs using the tropical zodiac in the upper half of the zodiac band in red color. These are called Sayana Rashis. So these four points, that is two equinoxes and two solstices of the zodiac are zero degrees of Aries, zero degrees of Cancer, zero degrees of Libra and zero degrees of Capricorn. And thus zodiac is divided into four parts of 90 degrees each by these four points representing the beginning of Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn. These points are used in marking the seasons on Earth. In case of the sidereal zodiac or Nirayana in Sanskrit, the starting point that is 0 degrees Aries is not the vernal equinox point, but is actually a permanently fixed point with reference to fixed star and this is towards the east side of the starting point of the tropical zodiac. This is shown on the screen with light blue dot. The angular distance between the two starting points of these two zodiacs is roughly 24 degrees longitudinally as it currently stands in the year 2019 and is called Ayanamsha in Sanskrit. Ayana meaning movement and Amsha meaning part. So in short, part of the moment. And I'm showing you that on the screen. I'm now showing the positions of the zodiac signs using this starting point under the sidereal zodiac in the lower half of the zodiac band in light blue color. These are called Nirayana Rashis. I hope you're with me so far. So as it stands, today the zero degree Aries or Mesh Rashi of the tropical or Sayana zodiac coincides roughly with six degrees of Pisces or Mean Rashi of the sidereal or Nirayana zodiac. As Earth rotates around its axis, the direction of Earth's axis of rotation changes and is, it slowly makes the sweep-like motion similar to the sweep of the spinning top and this is called precession of equinoxes. The path of this precession is shown with purple circle on the screen. Earth's axis sweeps around in a cone, taking roughly 26,000 years for each sweep or precession. Precession is caused by the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon, as Earth is not a perfect sphere, but has a bulge around its equator. This forces the Earth's axis to precess. The celestial poles and the celestial equator are supposed to be the fixed reference marks, but this precession causes the celestial pole to move around the sky, causing the celestial equator to drift westwards with respect to the ecliptic. So the vernal equinox point shown with the red dot towards the bottom of your screen, which is the intersection of the celestial equator and the ecliptic, also drifts westward longitudinally at an angle of 51 seconds of an arc each year, which is roughly one degrees in 72 years. In the diagram on your screen, I'm now showing new position of celestial pole marked with P1 in green color at the top of your screen, and the new position of the celestial equator marked with E1, and the new position of the vernal equinox point marked with V1 near the bottom of the screen all due to the precession of equinoxes. Due to the precession, vernal equinox point keeps moving westward and I'm showing this with new position of the celestial pole marked with P2 in green color at the top of your screen and the new positions of the celestial equator marked with E2 and the new position of the vernal equinox point marked with V2 near the bottom of your screen. Since the vernal equinox moves westward every year, so we have a new vernal equinox point position every year and hence a new starting point of the Sayana or tropical zodiac every year. 
This results in shifting of the sina signs and hence it is called moving zodiac. So every year the starting point of the tropical zodiac moves westward longitudinally by about 51 seconds of an arc from the starting point of the sidereal zodiac. Apparently in the past the starting points of the two zodiacs coincided. But as the vernal equinox point processes westward at the rate of about 51 seconds per year with respect to the fixed star, therefore the starting points of these two zodiacs have drifted away from each other over the years. I hope you now understand the difference between the tropical or Sina and the sidereal or Niraina zodiacs. In the Western astrology, some astrologers consider tropical or Sina zodiac for prediction purposes, whereas sidereal or Niraina zodiac is used in Vedic astrology as well as by many of the 20th century Western astrologers. There is a misconception that Hindus do not use tropical zodiac at all. Even in Vishnu Purana, which is regarded as one of the most authentic Hindu texts by the Western scholars, there is a mention of tropical or Sina zodiac, and its use in marking the seasons on Earth is also well known. And we have already seen earlier in the video that, the, that how the equinoxes and the solstices help us in marking seasons on Earth. In the past, the planetary measurements were always referenced to the fixed stars using sidereal system in astronomy and astrology. And the tropical system was popular for the calculation of seasons and weather forecast on Earth. Later on, astronomers began to record planetary ephemeris reference to the moving vernal points rather than fixed stars. Ephemeris is a table for manual use or a data file for computer use that lists the calculated positions of the celestial objects at regular intervals throughout the period. The data file is used in astrology software. Typically, when Hindu astrologers used to cast the horoscope manually, and I'm talking of those days when computer software for astrology did not exist, astrologers used to refer to ephemeris based on Sina method. They then used to convert the Sina figures obtained from ephemeris to Niraina figures by subtracting Ayanamsha from it for the year of the birth, which is the longitudinal difference in degrees between the Sina and Niraina starting points. In modern day astrology software, they use ephemeris data file and Ayanamsha to derive the sidereal or Niraina figures from tropical or Sina figures. All right. So you get the idea that sidereal or tropical zodiac is used to derive the Nirayana or sidereal zodiac in Vedic astrology using Ayanamsha. And for predictive astrology purposes, Hindu sages and ancient Hindu scholars always used Nirayana zodiac. And the same is used even today in Vedic astrology. I hope you now have much better understanding of the tropical and sidereal zodiacs. Bye from me for now until I return with another video on Vedic Astrology. Thank you for watching.